Today's lecture is on representation and description. So after segmenting an image to find regions of interest, we want to represent those regions in a concise form. And this can be used for recognition, compression, or further processing, such as uh, joining regions, simplifying them, or tracking them. And we're going to look at two main approaches, uh, one to represent the boundary of the region, and the other to represent the region itself. So first let's look at boundary representations. So we want a compact representation. We're going to consider a binary region, so we've segmented the object in um, you know, uh, two, two classes, a, a foreground and a background. And we'll look at two possible methods to do this. One is chain codes and the other is Fourier descriptors. So chain codes are a simple idea. It basically, uh, you pick a starting point on the boundary and you follow the boundary um, around the border of that region. And you record the direction of travel at each point. So we could have um, the convention of only considering the four cardinal compass directions, or we could also include the, uh, the diagonal directions as well. So four directional or eight directional. So recording those numbers, then we have a sequence of numbers that can be used to um, represent the shape of the border or for recognition. Um, one problem that you might consider, you might anticipate is that these chains co chain codes can be very long. <clears throat> and, you know, just natural noise in the image, perturbations in the boundary uh, can cause large changes in the code. We can avoid some of these problems by uh, just going to a coarser sampling. So if this was the, the actual border of the object, we could sample on a coarser grid and yield a much smaller number of points that wasn't so sensitive to small perturbations. Um, so here's an example. Um, here's our object. Let's say we start at this point. Um, we're really working with um, this coarse grid representation here. So using the four directional chain code, we would have this sequence uh, 0, 0, 3, 3, 3, etc., 2, 3, 2, and so forth. So that would give us uh, a code, a sequence of integers like that. Um, or if we went with the eight directional chain code where we consider diagonals, um, then we have things like 0, 7, 6, 6, 6, 5, 5, etc. Um, we can make the representation invariant to start our choice of starting point by considering a cyclical perturbation of the chain code to basically find the sequence um, of minimum magnitude. So in this case, uh, this example here, you know, this is the example, this is the integer of minimum magnitude because it starts with a zero. Any other starting point would yield a uh, integer of larger magnitude. We can also make the um, chain code representation invariant to rotation by simply uh, recording the relative turning direction at each point, which is the same as taking the first difference of the chain code. So namely, we go zero, there's no change, we go straight, one, we turn left, and three, we turn right. So for example, in this example here, if I started at this point again, um, I would go in this direction, Let's say the first direction is always a zero, and then we uh, turn right, so that's a three. We turn left, we turn right, and then we go straight a number of times. So the, the code would be zero, three, one, three, um, zero, 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 et cetera. Um, all right, so another representation of boundary uh, is the Fourier descriptor method. So here we represent the boundary by a sequence of points as shown. Whoops, get rid of that. So we have a sequence of points along the boundary, a sequence of x, y values. Let's say there's k of them. 
and we're going to use the convention we always go in clockwise order. So then what we do is we take each XY pair and form a complex number with it. So the X portion is the real and then we have the J measuring number times the Y part. So now we have a sequence of complex numbers. We then take the one-dimensional Fourier transform of that sequence to get a sequence of Fourier coefficients. And these are our Fourier descriptors. And as we'll see, they're a concise description of the object contour. And they can be used for things like um, we can change the shape of the contour, we can filter the shape, we can interpolate it, uh, we can morph it. We can also use it for characterizing and recognizing shapes. So, so here's our Fourier descriptors. Um, a of 0 is, as you can see, if you plug a 0 here, you're basically adding up all of the uh, points along the contour. There's k points. So if you were to divide by k, you would get the centroid of the shape. So a of 0 is actually the centroid of the shape multiplied by k, the number of points. We can always reconstruct the boundary by taking the inverse Fourier transform as shown here. And we can uh, truncate those coefficients, the Fourier descriptor coefficients, uh, to obtain a more concise representation. Essentially, that's a low-pass filter of the shape. Or if we want to, we could actually do a high-pass filter or sharpening of it. Let's do an example. Um, MATLAB Image Processing Toolbox has a function called BW Trace Boundary, which uh, traces the boundary of a uh, black and white shape extracts the sequence of points around the boundary. Okay, so we'll do that and we'll take the Fourier transform of that, uh, truncate some higher order coefficients, and take the inverse Fourier transform. So I'm going to use a sequence of images of these simple uh, tool shapes like this. Here's a MATLAB program that does that. We'll read in an image, a uh, binary image. We'll pick a starting point on the boundary at random, basically the first point that we find. We'll trace the boundary uh, using BW trace boundary. That forms a sequence of XY points along the contour. Next, we'll um, force the number of boundary points to be 128 by simply um, proceeding around the border and just taking uh, enough points so that we get 128 points here. We'll then take the Fourier transform of, of that sequence of points. We form them into complex numbers, as you can see here. Next, we'll zero out some of the coefficients. So we'll take the ones that are only near the, um, the low frequency point, um, namely a u of 1 or a u of 128. Then we'll take the inverse Fourier transform and uh, display the reconstructed boundary here. So here is that program. Um, I'm going to read in this image called Tool 88. So let me go ahead and run that. So here is that shape. Um, and here is the reconstructed boundary. Let me expand this. So it's overlaid on the actual boundary. The actual boundary is shown in black and the reconstructed boundary is shown in red. So a very good approximation to that. And that's with using uh, essentially plus or minus 32 around the boundary, so 64 coefficients. So if I change that, uh, let's see here. Let me pick, uh, let's say, 16. And now you see um, some um, rounding off of the sharp edges. So with only 32 coefficients, um, we have a more approximate version of the boundary. I'll reduce it to 8. And it rounds it off even more. But still pretty good um, approximation to that. And I guess going to 4, um, 
would give us an even worse approximation, as you can see here. So essentially, we've only used um, what? <coughs> um, let me display the number of coefficients in uh, C approx here. So C approx is um, the Fourier descriptors that I've retained. And there's really only, what, four non-zero values here and one, two, three, four, five non-zero values here. So really only eight, or I'm sorry, nine complex numbers to represent that entire boundary.